Over to Alan. I suppose oh. one, of, one of the things that, just from my perspective, coming from sorry, a, like uh, sorry, from a psychological background, um, but also working with the Paralympics, I, I'm trying to take this slightly out of context because I would see them quite naturally in that. That, that sphere in terms of competitive sport and also in terms of, of behaviours. But what, what I find incredibly good was today was the amount of times that people just got outside and, and that was really the, the, one of the biggest things. And, and that possibly goes to a different audience and that is the physical education group who are stuck behind four stone walls normally. Maybe on a pitch but it has boundaries around it. And they don't actually see the value of nature and the environment. They only see rules and instructing, I think you said over there. And to me, that they've got closed, closed minds. And they need to be a little bit more different from that. In terms of trying to sum up, it's only a couple of slides, so I won't keep you too long. But the words that I could see just from all of today was that the appropriate challenge given to the learner or to the individual. And there's lots of mixed abilities done in some of the, the activities we did today. And that, that came out, provided you can set that and I know in my group we, sort of, we talked about there needs to be a balance. Uh, and that, that's fine, but you'll work that out, but you'll probably work that out by asking the person as opposed to setting it yourself. Um, again, there was lots of adaptions going on. And that, that, that's, that's, that's fantastic, because the more we use that for the purpose of inclusion, the easier it becomes. And I know these are types of buzzwords, but when you're in an environment and you're working it for a long time, we tend to get quite stale in what we do. We've done it that way, it sort of works, it's be okay. Rather than say, listen, well, maybe I should just go in a different sector and have a look at what. And, and that actually helps create new ideas and transforms a little bit. And that's really, now for me, that came across today by the group I was with and the ideas that they literally had uh, within the, the things we did. I suppose the other things in terms of that was getting the, the participants as well as yourselves to get totally engaged. And I suppose that's a credit to, to Dave and, and, and Tomas and, and everybody working in this program is that the students who took us did that. They actually got us engaged. They got us involved. You know, they, they got us to do it without having, having to think, oh, let's get on with it. And that may be, unfortunately, easy for them because we tend to be active ourselves. And therefore, the, the market probably that, that we, we could be aiming for is maybe we should be looking at physical education teachers and students, and, and going, and then I would say probably, and Lauren, you said, the community. Both say sports development officers in places around like that, and around, around Ireland, because they don't see that. They see that, we'll pass it to the governing bodies, and we'll just let them deal with it, rather than say, listen, we have, Kerry is a fantastic place for the environment. Now, and, uh, you know, having lived in it for 17 years, now, I actually don't recognize it that much, you know, because you, say, oh, you see it every day. <laughs> and, and we lose sight of where, you know, the mountains, the rivers, um, Banner Beach, although I do see that every day. Um, the, other, the other thing for me was, it came up from, from Lauren's lecture, was th the supporting environment we give. We need to be, I suppose, relatively careful because of the balance, but allow them to be a bit a little more dependent on what they do. And the simple, you know, the simple things, like, and it is as, as simple as asking the right question. Um, do you need a hand? No, grand, that's fine. You know, so, and that, that's, that's all. And that, you know, that is not, that's not, I think, I can't remember who it was, was in the, the chair in the, the last group in the, the, uh, in the Astro. And uh, he basically said, when, when they were playing Jenga, the comments were, oh, well done, that was great. And he suddenly thought, he felt as if he was back, in his, 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 like totally getting patronized. And, you know, that, that does have come across, and I suppose I know that from the, the Paralympic environment. It, it is about it, they're, they're people first, and whatever else after that, we treat them as people, and then if they do need a hand, but we would do that normally anyway. So I don't see the disability as even being a, being a, a hazard. It was interesting you talked about storytelling today. Um, on the first, second task I think we went to, Dan suggested that he had no perception because he was visually, totally, he was totally blind. He had no perception of the course we went around. He thought it was literally about half the size of this room. Um, and, and one of the, the things is when you signpost, and this is probably physical education, if you signpost and tell them what's going to happen, what's going to do, people can readjust, reset, and redefine what they have to do. And therefore, their expectation, they can set themselves. 
but they know what's coming. And that's a lot easier. And they say, hold on a minute, you're taking me into the woods. <laughs> I'm blind. You know, and, and, you know, really that is, you know, for somebody who's, who, who has that impairment, that is a concern. You know, because there's a lot of trust going on, uh, which is great, but they need to know that that, you know, oh, what are we doing? We're going, okay, I'm going on a rope, grand, I'm following this here, okay, I go beep, right, grand, okay, I can get that. At least I know how long it'll take. You know, I, j I need that information first, so it is maybe one of our ideas that maybe it's good for facilitating as opposed to instructing. Um, loads of opportunities, accessibility. Um, the biggest thing I got from today was basically trying to, uh, it was the values that we actually impart by doing adventure and outdoor activities. Moral values, emotional values, social values, you know, the way we treat each other. Um, totally different and it always has been in terms of the outdoor environment as opposed to some of the sports. But, but that, that essence itself is actually so fulfilling. It's one of those things that, and I'll, I'll say it later on, that has so much potential. Um, what went on today, what I heard an awful lot this morning was about learning. We talked about a little bit about skill acquisition, we talked a little bit about um, retention, transfer and things like that there and, and part and part whole and things like that. All part of what I would call learning. You know, and and that, that really is part of the job as well. You want them to get better but you want to also to experience them, them getting better as well. And depending on the context, and it's interesting to, in, in Ireland, the culture You've mentioned a few times as well today about, oh, we're running a bit late now and such and such. Which is, you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to go over that as well in time. But it is about that as well. You need to take that into consideration when you have a group. Um, we talked a lot about feel today. Now, it wasn't just about, I would call, proprioception. It was actually emotional. You know, emotional feel. You know, that was a real, you know, I really enjoyed that. that was, yeah. You know, I achieved that. So when, they achieve, you know, when, when we achieve anything, it is quite a bit of a buzz. So she encouraged that as much as we can because that, that's, they'll go, come back and do it again. So we're actually in, empowering a motive on them to do and do again. Feedback, we talked about it a little bit in this morning um, in terms of instruction. And the three things I got from it was basically, you know, it's the person. They take the person first. Um, and the other thing was about trying to create that real perception of, of, of our environment and what it can actually offer. I'm going to finish with this last slide on, on a quote, I think. Um, it's actually a guy called um, Charlie Brown, but not the one that we perceive with peanuts, right? Uh, but it's an American psychologist on, and basically it says, it's more than knowing what to do. It's actually knowing how to get it done. And, and that is more important. Yeah, there's lots of ways of how to get it done, and today you've actually shown that. There's lots of adaptations. There's lots of ways we can actually get things done. What has to be done? Okay, we just have to, we have to get around the course. We have to get through a spider's web. We have to do such and such. How we got it done was had more value. We started to say, hold on, man. What do you think? <laughs> can we do that? Oh, I don't know. What about somebody else? And we talked about that, who was sitting in a chair who was at a different level. So everybody was up there. Chairs were down there. They're on a totally different level in terms of voice, in terms of inclusion. And, and that to me really we came up. And I would say, last bit there is that the whole idea of, of, of today, and I think the way I, the, the message that I got on is, is basically the limitless potential. There's so much that you can actually do out there. Like we've only had literally, what, an hour of practical activity? And in your field, and on your, all of your activities, and, I, and I'm, I'm a novice, totally in that, I'd say there is just so much potential out there that can actually change, challenge, and create. And uh, I, I, like I, for me, in terms of days or conferences or seminars or whatever, it's nice to be involved in, in the workshops that you do practically something and you can create some of the ideas that the theory behind it is actually being embedded into it. So I'm, I'm going to try and keep the time as much as I can uh, and stop. Are there any, does anybody else want to have a comment? Because I, I think it's quite good for the, the people online to hear your views. I know you've got a few up on the wall, but does anybody want to make a, a comment on that?
think the experiential nature was incredible in terms of, you know, we're all so used to teaching and uh, teaching others how to do. And the fact that it was hands-on for us today, I certainly learned a huge amount uh, in terms of we dealt with Frank in a wheelchair and, you know, while we were putting him through the spider's web, I was dictating to him what to do. And it was only in the feedback afterwards, you know, I realized that I gave him, I didn't give him any voice in, in his own action, you know. So that was huge learning through the experiential nature of the sessions. So thank you. I suppose um, just to emphasize the strength and importance of role models, I'm kind of trying to deal with something at the moment which may be to involve someone to become an instructor teaching climbing who's not your classic um, climber, um, to try and enable them to become A, qualified, not just get a, a standalone award for in their wall, but actually get a recognized award and be able to operate and be a role model for all people, not just people here maybe. In disabled in the same way, if you like, but something that's kind of there to see, to inspire. I think the power of role models is so massive across the board. Um, so that, that would be something I'd be pushing for. Um, I think it's important to emphasize that what we understand now is we cannot dictate the solutions. Uh, so there's not a certain way to do things. So I think people feel comfortable with the fact that we don't know it all and we are just constructing the knowledge as we speak. So because I, I believe many of the instructors feel they have to know it all and, and we don't. The, the field of APA is just developing now. So that's perfectly fine. And with things like this, we all build, build it together. Just a final comment about the, the self-determination um, thing. Uh, it, it's very important that people have the choice to do things, but as Lauren was saying this morning, how do we give people the enough, enough experience to be able to choose? Because many, of, many people with disabilities think they cannot do anything. So how, how, what do we do when somebody tells us? We don't really want to try, <laughs> you know? Um, I do believe we need to push it a little bit, <laughs> just because, yes, you need to try, and then you decide, just give me that, you know, just do that, <laughs> because people would probably say, I don't want to do it, and we just leave it there. I don't think it's good enough, <laughs> but thank you. Anybody else? that even for us as instructors ourselves that you know we were learning for me as well it wasn't that you know we had the, the whole answers but for us as instructors with mixed ability groups coming in that we do need to have a broad toolbox of everything that we can dip in and go oh well maybe that might work here or this might work here and not get stuck in like what um, you've said up there that oh it always worked and that's that's the way we did it that you really need to be changing all the time that's just you know the famous word of being adaptable but you know, to keep the challenge for the client as well, but even to keep yourself motivated as well. I think that your toolbox just has to get bigger and bigger for, you know, and things like this. You know, not only did I learn stuff from people that came to me, you know, hopefully that we pass something on to you as well. So that was. Thank you. Hi, Bess. <laughs> this, is, this is actually a little bit longer than I. It's, it's a whole other workshop in itself. But we, you know, we run programs for people with disabilities. But like what Mania was saying is that when, when people want to go out and do an inclusive program that, and you want, we want them to modify it for the people with disabilities, in our research we found it's not just a barrier. It's multiple levels of barriers. And once you get over transportation and you get over cost and you get over time and you get over attitudes, there's, there's so many other barriers that people have to face when they do inclusive programs. And so sometimes I have a lot of friends, even people who I think are leaders and role models, that do, you know what, it's just, it's so exhausting to have to fight and advocate for yourself all the time. And once you get, overcome the barriers you thought were in the way and you run into another barrier, it just can be so frustrating and to live your life like that. You know, like if you're deaf and you always have to, every single thing you do, you have to make sure there's an interpreter and who's gonna pay for that. And where are they going to get that person? How, are they going to be there the whole time? I mean, it, it can be so exhausting. And I think that 
that the, the work that we're doing is really helping to overcome some of those layers, but we have to realize that there are more layers to those barriers that, that we have to help overcome. So it's, it's a whole other conference, but. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose just in with the last two contributors there, that when people um, don't maybe want to try an activity and you know that you have to motivate them to do it because you have to get that first kid to do it and maybe they'll be the role model for first years coming in then they'll see that that's being done. So it might be like a little bit of tricking, kind of like just put the harness on. Just, you know, just try it up. I'm not going to make you go to the wall. You know, and once they get into that position, you have a better chance that they will take that next step or maybe the next time they come to the centre they'll do the next step. But it's um, things like the transportation then and all those barriers that I find at school as well. You know, I'm not going to be able to organise a special bus to come along behind the main bus with the other well, however many kids. And I would say to the kids beforehand, like in a social story type way, you know, do you mind if you're helped onto the bus, if you're lifted onto the bus, will you take that help? Because otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. And I find that fairly successful that after they do that plenty of times, it doesn't become an issue anymore, so we're over that barrier wherever we're going to go. But that whole thing of saying, will you take the help, um, kind of gets you across that. All right, thanks for that, that was great. Um, I suppose that two last points for me is, one is that, yes, we have, thanks to the dose of reality of giving us all our barriers back there, Lauren. Um, uh, or, or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to, and that, but I, I see them. I don't actually see them as barriers. I just see them as hurdles. You know, and we get, we'll always get over the hurdle. Um, and but the more we put up, it just takes a bit longer. Um, and and so therefore, yes, there will always be that. But there'll always be that in everything that we do. So it's never a, it's 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 per se in that sense. I said my last comment was that being one of the activities we did today, and Paul, was he wasn't at the opening ceremony in Beijing, were you? And yeah, because Pro Paul and the Paralympics had to go away from Beijing and he was down in the Sealing Village. And on the, the opening ceremony, we had a, um, a quadriplegic use the pulley to go up the flagpole to put the Chinese flag up. And it was probably the most sensational, you know, just come up in the chair, they give him the pulley, and then off he went. And we were sitting there going, Jesus. <laughs> you know, they, anybody can achieve anything in terms of their potential. And you suddenly think of him going, oh, look at me, you know, I've got all this stuff on me. Really, you really saw the difference. Um, and I had to share that with you because I knew you missed it. I knew that after the closing ceremony. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't actually really want to hear that one. But uh, I, I thanks again for, for all your participants and all your comments because uh, I think th the last bit is that, that is, it's, a, it's a learning experience for all of us. Um, and we, we can improve our own practice. Um, Something that's always struck me is that, you know, people with physical or, or learning difficulties are huge role models for children that have what we consider the normal abilities, you know, and I think it's very important to look at it from that perspective also. Thanks. Um, hello, everybody. I just joined in the last session, but I feel I just want to add something because the positiveness that's in the room is electrifying, you know, in, in terms of the energy. But just, Alan, what you've posted up there, what if your potential is limitless? What I would think about that is it's the potential of the participants is limitless, but the potential of the practitioners is equally limitless in terms of what we can do. And when I think about inclusion, we're talking a lot about how do we adapt if we're approached with needing to engage with somebody who has a disability, true inclusion is we ask ourselves that question, whether that person has a disability or not. So how are we adapting to engage with anybody, whether they have or they have not got a disability? Because equally, we have to adapt there. That's what I would say is true inclusion, not just to stop and think when it's somebody who has a disability. That's all I want to add. It's just it's so positive in the room. So thanks very much to, uh, to Alan for, for bringing it, I suppose, bringing our day together and for uh, eliciting those comments. I was particularly delighted to hear your comment about values. It's, it's certainly part of my ethos that uh, 
uh, so much of the roots of outdoor education are about values and uh, I know our students on the, the BA in outdoor learning we've been looking recently at values around environmental education and the work of Schwartz and Schwartz has done a lot of stuff uh, and is actually published on physical education and values as well and I'd, I'd strongly encourage people to, to, to look at that work. Um, we're at the end of our day um, I'd love to say that uh, everyone now will leave the room knowing absolutely everything there is to know about adapting adventure sports, but I know that's not the case, but hopefully we'll have sowed the seed um, of uh, the potential that, that can be there and thank everybody for the contributions they've made. I'd like to particularly thank uh, the students on the BA in outdoor learning. We're extremely proud of them. And as they pointed out to me on the first day they came into the college, uh, <coughs> we've 200 years of teaching experience between us, so just to let you know now before you start telling us anything. But uh, you know that certainly has come forward and uh, come out in the sessions they've, uh, they've run today, so uh, a big thanks to them. Um, uh, I'd like to, to, to thank Aileen, who's our head of department, um, and Seamus O'Shea, our head of school, who are immensely supportive of our program. And when myself and Dave come up with these wacky ideas to let's get 60 people in a room from all over the country, and then let's get lots of people in from online. And if you've been hearing a crunching in the last while, it's, it's probably Sean Healy in Virginia, who's just got up to have his breakfast, and it's his cornflakes that he's crunching there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, they've been immensely supportive in, um, in helping us to, to run this. And to run this, because you have to remember, this is a teaching day, this is a learning day for our guys on the BA in outdoor learning. This is a college day, just as much as anyone who was going to the swimming pool to the day or the astroturf or going into a lecture hall. Um, I suppose the extent of that support, again, that we've had is in terms of the IT guys here in the college, uh, between Chris and uh, Liam and, uh, and Jim as well, uh, like really to be able to, to stream uh, the work that, that you guys have been doing here today online and also that when you go on, you see the, uh, the YouTube channel here, Outdoor Learning which the, um, the library staff have set up for us here. So you can go to that afterwards, you can share those links, you can download the whole thing from today. Uh, and if you put it in your favorites, um, you know, more content we'll put up and you'll be able to access it from there. I'd also like to, to thank the CARA Center, who've been very helpful to us in uh, supplying us with resources and, and help and cases here from uh, uh, the CARA Center. And um, she's actually uh, brought along some leaflets about the disability inclusion training program which they're rolling out nationwide around the country and we've two of the DIT trainers here in the in the room as well people who actually deliver that program so if anybody's interested in those please maybe you can uh, approach Kate or you can take one of the leaflets here um, I suppose the, uh, to thank Dave because he had the, uh, the challenging job of uh, trying to be the moderator for the webinar and try and keep everybody who's not in the room up to date on, uh, on what was going on. Um, and I suppose lastly to, to thank Lauren and Alan for, uh, for contributing so much to today. It's, uh, it's really been great. So thank you all, everybody. <laughs> I would like to get a little bit more work out of you before we finish, okay? So uh, I know some people, um, I mentioned at the start that um, uh, Coaching Ireland and CARA, the National Adapted Physical Activity Centre, are working together with um, people interested in adventure sports in Ireland to look at how we can spread that message of inclusion uh, through uh, a framework uh, that will work in clubs, through coaching programs and in, and in the, the community. So uh, there, Kate, I think is it U3, 306, so basically up at the top of the building, uh, they're going for a meeting straight after this. And everybody here uh, has a voice there and everybody is invited to go to that. Um, the, the work that Coaching Ireland and CARA are doing in that is it's, it's groundbreaking because it's not something that has been the norm in adventure sports training in Ireland. Uh, the last piece of work I would ask from you is because you have to remember these students who've been contributing today, they're also young researchers and, um, and working on their own degrees. So uh, we've been trying to gather some information. Um, you, you filled in a questionnaire about attitudes at the start. If you were to fill them in at the end of the day, 
having maybe had some motivation, maybe captured some ideas, we'd be interested to know if they made any changes to your ideas. So if you want to take a blue one or a green one and pop them in the box at the end, then that would be really good. And um, also, as general feedback, um, you know, we try and run two, sem two, two seminars every semester. If there's something we can do to, to make the, the, um, these seminars better, or if there's an idea that you think, you know, you guys should really run a seminar on X, maybe give us some feedback here, and uh, we'd be delighted to try and act on that. So there you go. So Dave, are we done? Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, this is, um, this program wouldn't be on today except for our students on the BA in Outdoor Learning. And it, I, I mentioned it at the start of the day, it's an exciting program. It's a, a blended learning program where people can gain their degree while, while still uh, fully involved in either a community organization or, or working. And um, so there's information packs on that uh, for any of you who'd be interested in that or any of, the pe any of your colleagues at work. Um, as I say, the people who are on our program are fantastic practitioners and this program is to try and underpin their practice with an educational degree. So uh, those blue folders are here if anyone would like to take them. The next offering of that program is on in uh, September 2015 and uh, so applications are, are open now and there is uh, uh, what's called a recognition of prior learning process which people would need to go through which people would want to engage with in the spring. So there you go. Kate. Oh, great. Okay, so there you go. So you won't have to travel so far. The last thing is I know uh, some people are here as part of their work practice or maybe some students. And so uh, their you can have a certificate of attendance if you wish. And uh, Duncan, if he wants to wave his arm there for a second, uh, has those here. So if anyone would uh, need or like to have one of those certificates of attendance, if you come and talk to Duncan, he'll sort you out with that at the end of the session now. <laughs> have I remembered everything? Ah, okay, so your number was, when you fill in your questionnaire again, if you put your number on it, we can tie it with your previous one. You don't have to though. As I said, there's no Hyundai car. <laughs> so, but as I say to you folks, I, I hope you've gained something from the day. If you want to give something back to the day, if you could fill in those, it would really help our students with their research. Okay, thank you very much. I've got to go fly up to Dublin and get a Not flight. at all. Thank you very much indeed.